TypeScript is awesome, but it has one key problem, and that's that it only does build time type checking, not runtime type checking. Let me give you an example. So on the right side here, we've got some data that we want to parse through. So is it list of names and emails and phone numbers. And on the left-hand side, we've got the TypeScript that's going to look at this file. So now we defined a type at the top that says that email and name and phone are all strings. And then we're going to read that file into a local called contacts and then set that to be a contact array. And then we want to list those contacts, but we want to uppercase the names and we want to go and trim the email and the phone just to make sure that it looks nice. Let's give it a try. All right, we're going to run it. And we get back the dreaded cannot read properties of undefined error that we are in TypeScript to try and avoid in the first place. So what happened? Well, basically, we lied to TypeScript. We told it that contact phone is always there when in reality it's not. So the best that TypeScript can do is trust us at build time that what we say is going to be in these external resources like files or user input or coming in from a fetch are what we say they are. It's not going to do the checking at runtime of those types. A lot of people assume that it does. It doesn't. So in this video, we're going to take a look at two competing tools that do exactly this type of runtime type checking. We'll take a look at Zod and compare it to Valleybot. We'll take a look at how you define schemas, how you pull types out of those, how you do custom validations, and even how to do JSON schema stuff that you're going to need for like MCP servers. It's a lot of stuff to get into. Let's get right into it. All right, so let's fix this problem first with Valleybot. So I have already gotten Valleybot installed. So I'm just going to bring it all in as V. And then I'm going to define the schema for contact here. So I'm going to start by saying that we have an array of objects. And to do that, we just use V.Array and V.Object. Now you could, if you wanted to, just bring that in as array and object and then invoke it just like this. But I think most folks because these names are so generic, like array and object, like to put it on something like V, and you get to choose whatever that letter is that you want. All right, let's define our schema. So the name is going to be pretty easy. We'll just use v.string for that. But let's say that we want to go and apply a little bit more validation to that. For example, something like email. Well, what you can do with Valleybot is you can use the pipe operator to take multiple validations, in this case, v.string, which is validating as a string, and email, which is validating as an email, and you can basically pipe those together into one validation. This is, if you're a Zod fan, where it starts to diverge from Zod. Zod has a very different way of doing this with method chaining. We'll see about that in just a moment. And phone, of course, and, and let's define phone, which we now know, of course, is an optional. So we're just going to say v.optional there and say that it's an optional string. All right, now let's actually use that. So I'm going to get rid of this as contacts, since we no longer have that at the moment, and I'm going to parse that data using that schema. So we'll call this contacts JSON, and then we'll use v.parse when we give it the schema, as well as our raw JSON, and that's going to give us back the data. Now, as we can see, it's actually gone and created the right TypeScript type for this. So we don't actually have to create TypeScript types. It's going to do that for us automatically, although we can get that out, as you see in just a second. And it's got phone right, so we can see already that it's found our bug. Let's give it a go. Looks good. All right, now let's run it again. And there we go. Now I fixed our problem with Valleybot. So cool. All right, now this is cool and all, but I don't prefer to use parse. In both Valleybot and Zod, I prefer to use safe parse. And I'll show you why. So let's get rid of the optional here. And we know this is going to blow up. So let's give it a go. All right, boom. So what it's done is throw a validation exception, which is exactly what we want, by the way. That's fine. But if you don't want to put a try catch block or anything, what I like to do instead is use this safe parse. So safe parse doesn't throw. Instead, if there's an issue, it returns success as false and then gives you a set of issues. Otherwise, it gives you an output key in this output object, in this case called context. We'll call this result instead. And we'll look for results.success. And if that's successful, then we'll output everything there. Otherwise, we'll say that the contacts are invalid and output the issues. All right, now success is false, so we're getting contacts are invalid, and it's telling us that expected phone, but it got undefined instead. All right, now because you have a basic understanding of how this all works, let's go and take a look at Zod and see how Zod plays it a little bit differently. All right, let's put them side by side so we can compare 
on the Zod side, now we're going to bring in Zod V4. That's a big deal because Zod went from V3 recently to V4 in a huge upgrade that reduced the model size and increased the performance. Some say it's primarily in response to Valleybot. Competition is a great thing. As you can see, kind of subtly right now, there's a slight difference in syntax. For example, email is defined as just z.email as opposed to a pipe of string and email. Now to make phone optional, you can simply just add on in method chaining style dot optional. And that's actually one of the big differentiators is the style of DX between Zod and Valleybot. Zod uses method chaining where Valleybot uses a functional style where you use pipe and then you just add on as many validators as you want. All right, now I mentioned that you can get the types out of your schema so you don't have to actually manage both on your own. To do that in Zod, we simply use z.infer and that gives us the type for contacts. And in Valleybot, we do the same as v.infer output. All right, let's remove the optional here and take a look at how we can clean up the issues. So let's go over into Zod and we'll run that parser. And we see that for Zod, save parse gives us back issues, but it gives us back the issues in a slightly different style. That's okay. But either way, neither of these is particularly human readable. So let's see how to make a human readable output in both Valleybot and Zod. So for Zod, we can use the built-in prettyfy error and just give it the error. Let's take a look at that. All right. That looks pretty nice. I like that. Over in Valibot, you give it v.summarize and you give it the issues. Let's try that out over in Valdemo. And there we go, a nice human readable error. Now, thus far, we've just kind of done the type enforcement that TypeScript itself would use. Is there a string? Is there an optional string? But you can actually do a lot better with both Valibot and Zod. You can use custom validators. So let me show you how to do that. So let's start in Valibot this time. And we're going to create a custom validator for phone. To do that, we invoke custom, and then we give it the type that we want. Then we give it a function, which basically returns a Boolean. So in this case, we're just going to look for parentheses, three numbers, then three numbers dash, four numbers. And then the second parameter is the human readable text of the error. All right, let's go take this and add it into our phone. So that we're going to make the string optional. And then if there is a string, then we're going to apply that phone validator to it. All right, let's give it a go. All right, looks good. Let's actually tweak the data a little bit and get our validator to fire. So I'll take out one of the numbers, and now we get a parser error based on our custom parser. Awesome. All right, let me show you how to do the same thing with Zod. So we're going to go and create just a simple function this time. Phone validator takes a string, and then, and then we're going to add optional, and we're going to chain into phone a refinement for phone validator, and then that error message. All right, let's give it a go over in Zod demo. All right, looking pretty good. Let's go and tweak the number and try again. And there we go, our custom error message. All right, so another thing you can do in both these libraries is do data transformations or munging. So the data coming out of your safe parse is exactly the format that you want. So let's go and take this name that we're uppercasing here and just uppercase it right in the safe parse itself. So do that over name. I'm going to use a transform and just transform the value to uppercase. All right, let's give it a go. And there we go, uppercase. We can make it to lowercase just to see. Perfect. So the same thing in Valibot is you use the transform method to define a transformer. And then we use pipe to join that string validator with that uppercase transformer. All right, let's go take out our two uppercase down here. And we'll give it a go. All right, looks good, and the data is exactly the way that we want it coming out of that transformer. All right, so it wouldn't be a recent blue collar coder video without talking about AI, and in this case, we'll talk about MCP. Now, MCP allows you to define a bunch of tools for AIs, and the schema of the input is JSON schema. So there's a whole renewed interest in JSON schema. Really cool thing about these tools is they can take this schema that we've created, this contact schema, and turn it into a JSON schema for things like MCP, although it's used in a lot of different places. To do that in Valibot, we bring in the Valibot to JSON schema library. All right, now I've simplified our schema a little bit by removing the transformers because it's not compatible with to JSON schema. And then we're going to run to JSON schema and stringify that output. Let's go take a look. Yes, that is the JSON schema that we're looking for. That is awesome. Now, one thing you need to do for LLMs is actually describe the data in that JSON schema because otherwise it won't know how to use it. So in this case, you're going to add metadata into that pipe. So to then Valleybot, you add metadata into that pipe. So I'll add it for all three here. 
And now we can see that each one of our properties has the appropriate description, which is going to make it a lot easier for the LLM to parse. All right, let's take a look at what it takes to do the same over in Zod. So Zod has to JSON schema built in. You just give it your Zod schema and it gives you back JSON schema. Again, I have had to remove the transform, but let's take a look at the output. There we go. We've actually added in a pattern, which is pretty cool. Now to add in those descriptions, we have the method chain those right in. Let's go take a look at the output. And there we go. We got the descriptions as well. Now, no discussion of Zod before be complete without talking about Zod Mini. So now Zod Mini is Zod's basically response to Valleybot. Zod Mini allows you to do that same kind of functional chaining approach. And the functional chaining approach has a big win, which is that the bundle size can be smaller because it's easier to tree shake the functional style than it is the method chaining style. And the problem is that you really couldn't get there from here, right? Zod V4 would be entirely incompatible with Zod V3 if they just went with a pipe style. So what they've given you is both. They've given you the idea of using Zod V4 the way you did before, compatibility-wise, and then Zod Mini, which gives you this chaining style. So let's just take a quick look at what this would look like with Zod Mini. All right, I've added in Zod Mini Demo. Of course, all this code is available to you for free on GitHub on the link in the description right down below. And this is what Zod Mini Demo looks like in comparison to Zod. All right, so right at the top, instead of bringing in Z from Zod V4, we bring it in from Zod slash Mini. And then you can see the difference when we create the schema. In the phone field, we're using the chaining approach over in Zod, and we're using the dot check approach, which is essentially the same as Valleybot's pipe inside of the definition for phone over in the Zod Mini demo. Other than that, pretty much the same thing. And this allows the Zod Mini to be tree shaken even better to keep those bundle sizes really way down. That being said, I think Zod V4 is an 80% bundle size reduction over Zod V3. So that initial bundle size discussion between Valleybot and Zod isn't as relevant with V4 as it is with V3, but it's still relevant if it's really important to you to keep those bundle sizes way down. All right, if you have any questions or comments about this video, please put that in the comment section right down below. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. In the meantime, of course, if you really, really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.